Hi everybody, this is Adam Ellenboss from Nightlight Astrology, it's Sunday, July 7th, and today we're going to take a look at the upcoming opposition between the Sun and Saturn. Now, um, this opposition is taking place uh, right now and over the next few days. Let me put it up on the screen so you can see it. Um, this transit's already underway, so you're likely already feeling this one. By the way, I'm still on vacation uh, in Michigan at the moment, so I'm still in studio guest room. <laughs> I'll be back to my I'll be back to my office at home soon, and then it'll look more YouTube-y. Um, but at any rate, uh, so here it is. You can see here's the sun in Cancer, and it is moving through opposition to Saturn and eventually to Pluto. I want to talk a little bit about both of them. Um, first of all, I've been through this lately <laughs> because, because Saturn, I'm a sun cancer born on the 16th of July, and Saturn and Pluto are currently opposing my sun. Lovely. So, <laughs> so um, that recently resulted for me in a kidney stone, which was wonderful. Hope I never have to do it again. Um, but uh, one of the phrases that you'll hear used a lot for the sun opposite Saturn uh, or Saturn opposite the sun in your natal chart is creative crystallization. So let's unpack that a little bit. Uh, the sun generally has the meaning of being very creative. Saturn has the idea of forming things, of making things solid and making a shape out of something or a structure out of something. So this idea of creative crystallization can go together for the Sun and Saturn. So sometimes there's a feeling of being very productive, of being of birthing something uh, formally, even though it might be a little exhausting, uh, and also of um, sometimes the the feeling of um, you know the the labor, the the Sun Saturn, the contractions and the labor of creating something. So that's a very Sun Saturn. Sun-Saturn opposition. Now there are other interesting combinations that you can, or interesting ways of combining the Sun and Saturn that can yield other interpretive results. For example, the Sun-Saturn can be related to the death of the father. Saturn is death, Sun is father. Saturn opposite the Sun can be about depression. Here's the Sun, light opposed to Saturn, which is traditionally the ruler of darkness. It can also be about ignorance. Um, the sun represents illumination and clarity, and Saturn typically represented ignorance. And so the challenge to stay clear, to stay intelligent, uh, versus falling into something ignorant or even depressive again. However, the other thing that's interesting about Sun-Saturn is the constitutional quality that ancient astrologers talked about, ancient herbalists talked about too, uh, the, the, when they talked about the humors which was melancholy. Melancholy is not really talked about or understood um, today, but mostly, and I have no problem with people who need Western medicine, you know, using Western medicine. I'm not a, a hater about it, but my wife's an herbalist and I have a long history of uh, using um, uh, uh, entheogens and plant medicines to heal uh, personally, I, I went to the Amazon in my 20s and recovered from opiate addiction using ayahuasca um, and then got really interested in plant medicine in general. So I'm a big proponent of natural health, but, um, you know, people sometimes need Western medicine, right? So um, when you think today about melancholy, mostly you don't get a good understanding of depression or melancholy. Um, you don't get the full bodied feeling of melancholy because depression is mostly thought of as a bad thing. It's mostly treated with drugs. Uh, the sun Saturn opposition, uh, let's think about it in terms of melancholy. Um, but let's try to define melancholy in positive terms. You know, a lot of us like the blues music. Or we like um, we like a very soulful song that expresses some feeling of having endured suffering or pain or hardship, um, you know. And so, Sun Saturn and melancholy and depression give us some of the greatest and most resilient forms of art. 
So this is one of the hidden benefits of a Sun-Saturn opposition is the darkness that somehow is made into light. The darkness, Saturn, that is uh, seen in the light of the spirit soul, Sun. Um, there's a lot of people who are ostracized in our world today because they're more depressive, because they're moody, because they see death or difficulty or whatever. And people say, oh, that you're negative, you, you know. I remember growing up because I was a bit more of a melancholic myself growing up. I, you know, I wouldn't say that I was, I was angsty. I wasn't like a, a dark personality, but I just felt like a lot of, I saw through a lot of things. I think probably a lot of people who are interested in astrology feel similarly. You just see through some of the crap, you know, you're just like, this isn't uh, real. It's not authentic. And um, you become interested in, uh, that you look, you seek out like a like a you know like a bumblebee or, or whatever your 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 honeybee. You're looking for the nectar. Where is the nectar? Because all I see is a lot of fake. I see a lot of dark. I, you know. So melancholics are also very selective when it comes to where they will see and accept uh, something presenting itself as happy or good or beautiful or true. Um, because there's a, almost like a higher standard, a higher taste. Well, sometimes a higher taste comes also with um, a lower tolerance for um, other things in the world that uh, other people seem to be pleased with. The well, Sun-Saturn is sometimes also about selective taste. And the way that selective intelligence or selective taste can incline one towards very special, unique states of consciousness, or uh, you know, like a, like a refined, sensible uh, sensibility, or a refined artistic taste, or even a refined palate when you eat. Um, but in order to have that refined palate, you also have to have a kind of exclusivity, and Saturn is the planet of exclusivity. And so, Sun Saturn, I have a very special or peculiar taste even to a certain extent fetishes can be a sun saturn thing um, things that we love in private where no one else can see things that we love to do um, that we take joy in that lights us up but that we like to do in private or away from the world and sometimes it can make us snobbish or sometimes we can be um, you know sort of elitist so these are all potential issues with Sun and Saturn. Sun and Saturn can also be about um, authority and the ego, trying to wield authority in a way that I'm going to be the authority, Sun, but I'm going to do so, you know, with kind of an iron fist or with uh, an emphasis on form, structure, tradition, control, some of which could be good, some of which is not going to be good. For example, um, if you're an Olympic diver, I guess, um, you know, you would need in order to be at the top of your game and achieve the greatest fame, status, and rank, the gold medal of the sun, you need the form and structure to be really, really strong. So it's elite special achievement because of adherence to structure, form, discipline. And in that sense, the sun Saturn can also be about, um, mastery and uh, uh, what it takes to be masterful. But how many of you have ever met, and I've met a lot of people, <laughs> I've met a lot of people like this because I do readings, right, for thousands and thousands of people over the course of my career so far. Um, I've met a lot of people that fit what I would call the new age profile. And the new age profile is sometimes it's like this. It's I'm all sunshine. I'm all positive. I'm all happy. It's all going my way. Oh, and I'm all powerful. Right. Right. Give someone a Reiki certification these days and they think they're God. You know, you know what I mean? I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> That's mean of me. But you get what I'm saying. It's like if you have you have a you've you've you have a Reiki certification, you've gone to a bunch of spiritual workshops you you may end up being the world's most uh, fundamentalist and rigid positive thinker in the world. You may think of yourself as all powerful, that you can bend reality to create whatever you want, that you have all of the new age 
mystical powers and mojo in the universe, you know, and um, also that you are 100% just a positive, pure, you know, <laughs> you're just a, you're a pure white billowy cloud surrounded by sunshine and you're just floating through life um, unaffected by anything. But, you know, it's amazing for how this kind of new age profile that I'm giving of, of a personality, it's amazing how much these same individuals will become um, ruthless, cold, angry, stern, controlling, uh, you know, inflexible, if you try to tell them that a difficult astrological transit is coming. You're like, you might have something difficult going on over here. You know, essentially it's like, uh-oh, I don't know if this guy's an astrologer. I think he actually, he might be a demon, right? <laughs> right? This guy may actually be one of the commanders of the army of darkness because, <laughs> because he's telling me that something negative may happen. So he's telling me that something subjectively unpleasing may happen. And you see that doesn't happen in my world. You know, it's what's white knuckled positivity. <laughs> so I don't mean to be a jerk, but that's the sun Saturn dynamic, right? So you can, and as astrologers, um, we can be like this sometimes too. You go and see an astrologer and they just tell you all the positives. It's all, all the good things, you know, all the good things are coming. You're a level 10 shaman. You just have a little bit more leveling up to do. And you know, you're going to start your own school. You're going to be writing your own books. You're going to be on all the talk shows, whatever. So the, the, the coveting, the, the, the desire for spiritual fame, rank, reputation, um, underlying it sometimes is a really intense rigidity. On the other hand, you can have positive forms of austerity, right? Um, there's nothing better than having a little bit, a little bit of self-control, you know? There's just nothing better than having uh, not just, you know, fly, <laughs> flying around like a, you know, like a, like a, like a crazy puppy just not so just if your life is just you know bonkers all over the place and you don't have any rhythm any structure any routines that help you stay in your center you know, there's nothing worse than that it's actually like we're, we're just like kids we do better with a little structure you know so at any rate sun saturn can also be about the need to uh, support your happiness in life because of a little healthy structure so these are all Sun-Saturn dynamics. You should be feeling them in the days ahead. In uh, the next three to four days, you'll feel them. Um, Venus will end up getting in on the opposition. Uh, and then the Sun is going to go through an opposition to Pluto. Um, and the opposition to Pluto is something I'm going to make a separate video about, kind of take it one at a time. You can't really separate them from one another because they're together. Um, but I find that when talking about it and thinking about it, it's helpful to break it down a little bit. So, um, interestingly, as this is happening, the sun is also moving uh, through a trine to Neptune. So, as this opposition to Saturn happens, there's also this little trine that the sun and Cancer is making to Neptune and Pisces. Um, so, it's interesting because, again, what I would think of right now would be that um, when you're thinking about spirituality or when you're thinking about creativity, imagination, um, anything that takes you into a different state of consciousness um, and the desire to um, become a channel or a conduit for some kind of creative transmission that takes form or shape. It increases a little bit with Neptune there, the, the power of imagination, the power of vision and fantasy, and to, to find a, a, a tangible, solid uh, medium through which to express itself, to take shape, to take form, to crystallize. Um, on the other hand, the potential for there to be an even more potent sense of being. Um, the positive, the bright, the beautiful, the fan the fantasy, the vision, right? All sun, Neptune stuff. For it to become a little dogmatic, to, for it to become ironically controlled, you know, um, 
So watch, be a little extra careful, right? Of the, the of like, <laughs> kind of like, you know, a, a fascist level of, of positivity or, you know, some, some kind of great idea or some kind of inspiration comes along, some kind of, you know, fantasy of how great something could be. And then behind it immediately is like, Mm, <laughs> just like mm, let me just try to control it as much as possible be careful of that right now because the saturn will come in and you know turn you into a, a fundamentalist overnight about whatever it is that you're you're feeling sort of lit up about on the other hand if you do if we do this wisely um, the potential for something to crystallize that's very creative could be there especially with considering the the uh sun mercury um, the, 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 excuse me, the Mars Mercury conjunction taking place as Mercury turns retrograde in a square with Uranus. There's an inventive energy in the air right now. So I think something inventive, something imaginative to take concrete form or shape, to turn into something, a collaboration, it's there. It just, you have to be also careful because, you know, a lot of, as, as we know, revolutionaries often become the new tyrants. So where there's a revolutionary vibe right now, just be careful that the ego and this sense of this desire to kind of control and get fanatical about something doesn't take over. All right, that's what I've got. I hope that this was interesting. Sun, Sun Saturn over the next few days. Tell me how it goes. I'd love to hear your stories as usual. And uh, I will be, I'm still in Michigan for the uh, better part of this week. So I'll be back with uh, more on the uh, Sun and Pluto coming up in a few days. All right, take care.